What's up, y'all? Something very, very special today. I'm reviewing Daddy Noel's eight-week hypermass training program. So you open up the program, you scroll, scroll through it. I won't show any pictures or images of the program because it is not a custom plan, which would be very reasonable to show. It is a fixed template. Therefore, you know, it would be sort of shitty of me to actually show it. So, but I will describe it in, in gruesome detail. Uh, it shows him with a before and an after picture looking saucy as it gets. Then a picture of him and he, he has a great physique, freaking African genetics, right? First, it talks about the warm-up, and he suggests doing four sets of 20 to 30 reps in order to get ready for the actual workout. I would consider that to be very excessive. If you are an enhanced and advanced lifter and you're kind of beaten up, it might make sense to do that much work to actually prepare the body. But for the average person, that is certainly not needed and definitely excessive, even with light weights. Don't say it, baby. Then he talks a little bit about tempo, which features prominently in his plan. So basically, it's how long you take to lower it, your pause, your contraction speed, and then your pause at the top. So you might see like 4010 or 3102, just how long the rep takes and how long to emphasize each part of the rep. I personally never recommend this. I think it is delving into minutia that is simply not needed in the vast majority of cases. All right, getting into the split, it is Monday, back and biceps, Tuesday, chest and calves, Wednesday is an active rest day, but he does have optional work for your arms, your calves, your core, Thursday, hamstrings and honey buns, Friday, shoulders and triceps, Saturday is another active rest day, so again, you can take it completely off, or you have the option of doing, you know, accessory type of work, and then Sunday are glutes and quads. So it is a bro split, but there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you can get results on pretty much any split as long as you manage everything intelligently. All right, so let's get into the first day. Monday, back and biceps. So first is a superset, supersetting a lat pull down with a seated cable row. The first is for 20 reps, and for every fifth rep, you hold the contraction for five seconds. I'm not a huge fan of that because it's going to reduce the weight that you use by a huge amount. The contracted part of the range of motion is by far the most difficult. And therefore, if you're doing this for a 20 rep set, this is going to be very, very lightweight, especially when you're supersetting it with seated cable rows for 10 to 15 reps. So both are fine, but I would give yourself a rep range on the lat pulldowns and I would just not superset these at all. Next, we have a barbell deadlift for four sets of 10 reps, which is quite a lot, especially when you have a four second lowering phase. So, you know, this is definitely going to be challenging. Is it excessive? Maybe uh, 10 reps on deadlifts are not exactly cardio, but sort of getting up there. And I wouldn't typically recommend that high of reps for a barbell deadlift. No, Daddy, no. The next exercise, you have a seated cable row or a barbell row. Nice to have an option there for 10 reps of six sets with a 15 second rest. So I guess you're going to be chasing the pump. It's almost like a rest pause type of thing. Uh, I would say there's nothing entirely wrong with that. I would ju just prefer sets across. I would say that's going to be just as effective for a natural lifter, but there's nothing entirely wrong with this either. Followed by a cable lat pullover for four sets of 20 reps. Completely fine, nothing wrong with that. I might suggest a minor change like a 15 to 20 rep range, but overall, completely fine. Oh, yes, daddy. Then you have three exercises for the biceps. The first is a rope cable hammer curl for four sets of 12 reps. Seems legit, no problems there. Next is a barbell curl for 10 reps six sets again with that 15 second rest again i would prefer sets across but this isn't too bad either finishing up with dumbbell biceps curls four sets of 15 reps again i would prefer to have a range to give you a sort of target not just one number to hit um but not the worst thing in the world overall i would say this is not too bad it's it's, it's not amazing but it's pretty good exercise selection is on point a few minor tweaks to the rep ranges might make sense, but overall, pretty good. Oh, yes, daddy. All right, next up we have chest and calves. So you start up with the warm-up protocol, 
a four sets of 20 to 30 reps. First exercise, dumbbell bench press drop set. 12 reps down to 20 reps for four sets. No, daddy, no. So typically when I recommend drop sets, they are at the end of the workout just because they do generate a lot of fatigue and they impact performance afterwards. So you wanna put those near the end of the workout. Plus when I write a drop set into a program, the second set is not specified. So I know how many, what weight I should use to get 12 reps on dumbbell bench press, but I don't know what I would need to drop to to get exactly 20 reps. That is very, very difficult to predict. So I would typically say just drop 30, 40, 50% of the weight off the bar and then just go to failure or close to failure again. That is much more flexible and much more realistic as well. Rather than saying 12, drop to 20. Second exercise is an alternating chest cable crossover, 16 to 12 reps, 12 to 16 reps for five sets with a 1013 tempo. So each set is taking a minute to a minute and a half, which is pretty lengthy. Oh yes, daddy. And combined with the five working sets, this is quite a bit of work. I would actually also put these later in the workout because they are more of an isolation type of movement. All right, next up we have incline barbell bench press, tried and true movement, very solid, pretty standard. Three sets of 30 reps, okay. Slow negative every second five reps. So the first five reps are done with a one, 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 one tempo. So each rep is taking four seconds. And the second five reps are taking four, one, one, one. So you do a four second negative rep for 30 reps. So I just did the math, and if you add up all of the reps with this tempo, each set is gonna take two minutes and 45 seconds. No, daddy, no! Have you ever seen someone do a bench press set for two minutes and 45 seconds without stopping? I don't even know how much weight I would be able to use for this protocol. Probably not that much more than just the bar. And if you're a beginner trying this program, I would say most people who buy this program are probably beginners, early intermediates. You probably can't even use the bar. And that's one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen written in a weight training program. And I've seen a bunch of shitty stuff. This is up there, unfortunately. All right, then the next exercise, because you're not done yet, is a machine chest press, four sets, eight to 12 reps. Completely fine, nothing wrong with that at all. Very standard. And then you finish off with incline bodyweight pushups, two sets to failure, um, which seems excessive after all the other shit. You know, the drop sets, then the crossovers, then the 30 rep for three sets on the incline barbell. That is kind of overkill. Then you do calves, standing machine calf raises, supersetted with seated calf raises, supersetted with standing bodyweight calf raises, four sets in total. So 30 reps, then 15 reps, then to failure. Um, I don't actually see anything wrong with this. Oh yes, daddy. Because calves have a very short range of motion, therefore higher reps kind of make more sense. Plus they're very resilient and um, yeah, completely fine. Then on Wednesday, you have an optional off day or a workout that consists of alternating dumbbell curls for sets of 10 reps per side, completely fine. Supersetted with triceps skull crushers. The trouble is the day before you just completely wrecked your chest and a lot of those supersets and, and you know compound movements are gonna be working the triceps. And so I would say, just take the rest day, bro. Just, just take a knee. It's okay to take a day off. You don't have to train every single day. You're doing push downs, quadruple drop sets and, and biceps curls, quadruple drop sets and rear delt flies, quadruple drop sets, four drop sets barbell shrugs. Um, on isolation movements, those are more viable, but still it's definitely overkill. And I would highly suggest if you decide to do this program, which you probably won't after this video, just to take the day off. All right, getting into Thursday, hamstrings and honey buns start with the leg day warm up protocol. So four sets of 20 to 30 reps, followed by barbell back squat, four sets of 20 reps. That seems excessive. 
No, Daddy, no! Followed by Lying Hamstring Curls. 12 reps drop to 30 reps for three sets. Again, using a slow tempo and keeping the time under tension. Third exercise, walking lunges. Four sets of 20 reps with 30 seconds rest. I would suggest taking longer than 30 seconds rest. You don't need to chase the pump if you are a natural lifter. Exercise number four, barbell or machine hip thrust. 12 reps for four sets with a six second hold at the top. So there's nothing wrong with the set and rep range, and there's nothing wrong with contracting at the top, but six seconds is a bit excessive, and it's definitely gonna dramatically limit the weight that you can use. This means that every single set is gonna be taking about a minute and a half. So you've already done four exercises, which is already a very solid leg day, and now you have three by 15 on stiff-legged deadlifts. No, daddy, no! But luckily, at least that's the last exercise. Oh wait, no, there's more. Seated hamstring curls, 25 reps for three sets each, followed by glute cable kickbacks, 12 reps, four sets, which takes twice as long because you have to do each side. So that's a very long day. Well, you'll definitely be sore after all of that. Oh yes, daddy. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you will grow. Next up Friday, getting towards the weekends, shoulders and triceps. So starting out with dumbbell side laterals for 10 sets of 10 reps with 10 seconds rest. So I guess this is just chasing the pump. Um, yeah, you're gonna get a mad pump with this. I don't see anything wrong with this, but put it later in the workout. It's very fatiguing and it's an isolation movement. So put it later. Followed by barbell overhead military press. Four sets of eight to 12 reps, completely fine, wonderful, tried and true movement, solid rep range as well. Oh yes, daddy. Followed by rear delt rope pull, which I'm pretty sure is just a face pull. Four sets of 10 reps, completely fine too. I might actually put those before the military barbell presses because it's a good warm up for the upper back. Exercise number four is a dumbbell shoulder press. 10 reps, drop to 15 reps, drop to 30 reps for four sets. That is absolute overkill and I would never ever recommend that, even for one set, let alone four sets. Then you followed up with rear delt dumbbell flies, four sets of 20 reps. And in that case, it's actually fine because those are better done for you know 15 to 20 reps or so. Followed by four exercises for triceps, Easy bar skull crushers, four by 12, completely fine there. Four drop sets on straight bar cable pushdowns. So 12 reps down to 15 reps, a little bit excessive. Maybe just do one drop set. Followed by three by 25 on machine or body weight bench dips. 25 is a bit high, but I guess it's doable. Followed by strangely last, close grip bench press for a four by 12. So I would maybe put those a little bit earlier. Um, you should be pretty warmed up at that point. Plus it's the biggest, most compound movement there. So you're gonna wanna be freshest for those, even though you're already gonna be definitely not fresh after all that stuff before. Saturday, you have another active rest day with an optional workout. So calves, leg raises, planks, uh, dumbbell pullovers, forearm barbell bench curls, and he actually suggests those for a four by 12. And I would actually say this is the only case in the program where I would suggest slightly higher reps. So I would say typically 15 to 20, even 25, 30 reps is a better call on this one. But there's nothing really wrong with 12 reps either. All right, Sunday, last day. Hopefully you're not still sore from the other leg lower body workout. Starting out with leg extensions, triple drop set because why not of course 12 reps to 15 reps to a 20 second hold for four sets no daddy no then now that you're nice and trashed or warmed up you go to barbell back squat eight reps drop to 12 reps for five sets so i would never ever recommend drop sets on something like a barbell back squat it's just too easy for your form to break down and you to get snapped the fuck up let alone for five sets. All right, after that, if you can still walk, which might not actually be possible, move to the leg press to do close stance leg press for four sets of 25 reps. 
again with a 2-1-1-1 tempo. At that point, you might not be able to think, so maybe just do the best you can. After that, crawl over to the hack squat. and do four sets of 12 reps, supersetted with body weight, kneeling, leg extensions. After that, you are done for the day. Oh, I'm just kidding. No, daddy, no. You have four sets of wall sits, followed by three sets of two minutes of walking lunges. Get fucked quads. So this is one of the most difficult and challenging and probably excruciating plans that I've ever seen written. But does that mean it's going to be optimal for hypertrophy in natural lifters? Hell no. Don't conflate difficulty with results. Often, some of the most effective plans are way, way easier than this. And don't get in the mindset of, oh, work hard, work, you know, outwork all the competition. Just because you're doing something shitty doesn't mean it's effective. And I really wanted this program to be good. I really, really wanted this program to be good but it's just objectively not. But let's get into the pros and cons. I'll start with the cons because I want to end on a good note because I do still like Noel, and I still think he's a force for good in the fitness industry. So first, warm-ups. Excessive. 20 to 30 reps for four sets is just complete overkill. And for the vast majority of people, just not need it. It's excessive. Second, too many exercises. Okay, you don't need nine exercises on a lower body day. That is just way too much. Next, too high of reps. You can gain muscle on a wide variety of rep ranges, but performance tends to degrade very rapidly when you do this kind of higher rep training. I would never ever write into a program three by 15 on stiff legged deadlifts or something like that. It's just not optimal. Next up, tempo training. So in most cases, this is actually counterproductive, not worth focusing on. Just don't lift like an idiot, okay? Don't like flail around and shit like that. Lift under control with the eccentric and then lift under control with the concentric, but aggressively and without counting how long it actually takes. And in something like this incline barbell bench press, three sets of 30 reps with a slow eccentric every five reps, it's just not necessary, and it's way more complicated than it needs to be. Plus, it doesn't even make sense in the first place for a natural lifter. This probably doesn't even make sense for an enhanced lifter doing almost a three-minute set. Next, the drop sets and supersets. I include both of these in my book, and they are certainly something that you can incorporate into your training and benefit from. But when half of the sets are drop sets it really is not going to be optimal, okay? It's something that is just excessive, it's too much, and save this kind of metabolic type of training for occasionally. It works well for enhanced lifters, but if you're natural, this is something that is more of an afterthought, more of a supplement to the real, heavy, progressive training. Next, similar to too many exercises, the volume is just excessive. It is too much. For this kind of plan, you're going to be in the gym for hours and hours and hours. If you want to do that, that's fine, but for most people, they don't want to, and there's really no point or benefit at all. And I don't know if Noel has actually done this plan or if you know this is just something he wrote out or someone else wrote out or, or whatever, but keep in mind he is enhanced openly, which is good, advanced, and very, very fucking large. Unless you fit all three of those categories, this is definitely not the plan for you, at least not as it is here. Next, the exercise order could often be definitely optimized in some places. You know, doing a bunch of drop sets of side laterals before you do military presses. Yes, I get it, pre-exhausting is a thing, but if it's excessive, it's definitely going to limit your performance as well as your progression. And for a natural lifter, progression is the name of the game. Next, pictures. Now, when Greg Doucette's book didn't have pictures and it was $200, that is a huge freaking deal. For this, not to have pictures isn't a big deal, but still, it's $15 and it probably should have some 
pictures or demonstrations of the exercises. After all, it was $15, the exact same price as my book, and my book has hundreds and hundreds of pictures and is about 10 times as long. Product plug. I don't give a fuck. It's a good book. You should go buy it. Next, progression. It doesn't give any advice or hints or anything or, or any guidance in terms of how you progress on this plan. I suppose it says like add weight when you can, but typically you want more than that. My book, again, plug, I don't give a shit, has an entire chapter on making progress. It is absolutely vital. The best plan in the world, which this is definitely not, is useless if you don't know how to progress. Next, moving on to the good things. Exercise selection is very, very good. Oh, yes, daddy. Tried and true basic movements, a good mix of compound and isolation, and it's very much on point. It's a little bit excessive at times, too many exercises, too many sets, too many reps, too much everything. But in terms of which exercises are being used, 100%, very, very good. Next, he does have a description under each exercise, maybe not exactly detailing how to do it. It's a lot more brief than the descriptions I have in my book. But it is sufficient, and he does teach you some visualizations about how to do the movement. So he's saying, okay, do leg press in this way, pushing in this manner to work more quadriceps. And I think this is a very good addition and something that a lot of books definitely don't go into, and they should. Next, the price is pretty reasonable. Certainly, I would say this is not worth $15, but it's also not a clear cash grab. He, caught, he probably could have charged... 30, 40, 50, 60 dollars, and some people would have bought it just if they're being a fanboy. But he did it. He priced it at 15 dollars, which is fairly reasonable. So overall, if you still want to buy this program to support Noel, as I did, I would say cut it in half. So cut half of the sets, and it'll be a little bit better. Remove the vast majority of the drop sets and the supersets. Reduce the rep ranges and give yourself a range, not just a 4x20 or a, a 3x30, but give yourself a wider range and a lower range in which to train in. That is going to be better for a natural lifter. The overall split is okay, um, but just those pretty major changes should make it a more viable, doable, and sustainable plan. So overall, I tried to highlight the good wherever I saw it. There just wasn't really a lot of good to be had in this program. All right, that is all for this video. Like, subscribe, share, slap around that notification bell, all that good stuff, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.